Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the programme. Uh, nice to have you with me today. I'm Andy Crane, here till two, and for the first hour, as we have done for the last eight programmes, we will compile the Manchester Manifesto. Today we compile the final page. It's the page headlined Arts. Any thoughts on that? Very welcome. 0161 228 2255. You can text 07786 206951. In terms of our region and arts funding, arts development, something you've benefited from in relation to the arts, what needs to be improved, what could be changed, what might have to be scrapped. We're looking at an awful lot of funding cuts across the board in all um, political departments, whichever government comes to power. It's one of those departments, isn't it? Culture, media and sport and the arts that might have to suffer. So we might end up discussing what we'd like to keep rather than what we'd like to have improved. Three guests with me, as always. You'll meet them in just a moment. Today, then, we turn our attention as regards the Manchester Manifesto to the arts in the company of uh, Joe O'Byrne, a Bolton-based actor, director and playwright. That's quite a thing to have on your business card. Good afternoon. Aye, filmmaker as well. Good afternoon. As well, films yes. as well. OK, I'm sorry, I shall I'm add sorry, that. I'm sorry, no I've I missed out, I missed a few out, bottles from time to time. Missed out the important thing. There's lots to discuss, and we have to worry about uh, funding for the arts, and I suspect we'll get into that. But let's start our conversation, as I have started every other one, with how has it been under 13 years of labour in terms of arts funding, provision for the arts, grants and the like? My experiences of labour have kind of been good and bad. So. I, th I think that that's something that's been reflected in, in every conversation I've had, whether it's been health or whether it's been education or transport or the economy. It's been a bits of good and bits of bad. Is that is that a fair assessment for you, Joe? I mean, when did you decide that you were going to write plays for a living and be a, a well, director and an actor? I mean, is it something you've always done? It's, no, it's something that I started very late in life, actually. How, in, how long ago? I came into it um, by accident, the writing side. I wanted to be an actor at the age of 37. I abandoned a, film, a uh, successful retail career I'd had enough of that I thought I'm only here once what I really want to do and what I really wanted to do was express I was a big film fan a big theatre fan all that sort of stuff so did, did this manifest itself under the current administration is it, it within the last it, 13 years uh, it, yeah it, it would be I started at Salford University the year Labour came to power right 1997 so all your influence not that you've not been influenced by the arts but all your uh, sort of you know uh, movement in terms of it being a profession has been mm. under this administration. Has, Have you yeah, been given yeah. support and um, no. the finances that you need? Is it easy mm. to do? It's horrendously difficult to do. Uh, I find and, ex and extremely frustrating to the point that I do everything. I've, everything I've done so far, I've done on my own steam. Uh, you'd think the likes of the UK Film Council would be there to support British film, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're not. As I'll go into more detail as the show goes on, um, and. You find that applying for even even funding for certain players, there's so many boxes that you have to tick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that becomes a frustrating process. That your original vision becomes that tainted, that you've driven yourself insane to meet somebody else's. So, is there criteria. too much bureaucracy in the application for funding? Far too much. Uh, as, as one line, we'd like a reduction in the bureaucracy necessarily. Absol absolutely, absolutely, particularly around the video recordings act as well, which I want to. We'll, we'll get on to that. Let's yeah, let's yeah. get uh, Sue's assessment of being an actor under a Labour government. We're, 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 it's all, Joe, it's all about money. Is it going to be all about money with you? Were you to become the, the minister in charge? Well, I think the first thing that I'd do... Well, there's, there's two things I'd like to do, but the first thing I'd do, and I apologise to the VRAA guys, I will get to that, um, but is reinstate film quotas in this country. Reinstate? Film quotas. Film quotas. Yes. Explain to me and people who don't know what that means. Right, well, up to, uh, up to 1969, we had a film industry in this country. And that stroke of a pen, it was destroyed in a, in a deal that was done with Washington years back. But again, that will come out during uh, this discussion. But basically, um, we are a nation of 65... I think, is it 65 million people? Something, Something like that. that. Um, Finland have a nation of 5.5 million people. We produced, over the last 30... Well, since 1970, we've produced an average of six films a year as a country. Uh, Finland have produced an average of 29 films a year as a country. Because they have people. had money given because, to them to do so? No, basically, they reserve 12% of their market for Finnish films, Finland films. You, you mean right? distribution and, yes. and, and showing in cinemas, uh, not, not showing in funding? Cinemas. No, no, showing, showing in cinemas. But there is cinemas. an outlet for the films? Yes, there's an outlet for their films. Similarly, the French, the French have a model as well that does the same type of thing, but they support, they manage to produce something like an average of 102 films a year. And what they've been very good at, and what, and what we have got terrible at is keeping the americans out the difficulty the well yeah and i and i understand your, your point i think that the observation has been made that that, that 
countries for which English is not the first language mm. want to keep their own language alive and can yeah. do so by doing it with the film industry. We're happy to watch films in English, but they just have to be made by Americans. What's the last foreign film you watched? Foreign film? Yeah. Oh. I, I probably can't remember the name of it, but it mm -hmm. was something about uh, Nazi Germany with subtitles. It was very good. I can't okay, remember so. the name of it. Uh, last foreign film you saw? Exactly. Emily, the other night. Ruth? Um, I can't remember. No. Okay. <laughs> there isn't a market. So, what we're, saying, so what we're saying is American films aren't foreign. Oh, okay, yeah, good That's point, good the point. point. Well, That's yeah. exactly the point that I'm making here. Well, uh, Ninety... which is my point. We, we yeah, don't yeah. refer to them as foreign. They're in English. They're distributed. Absolutely. They have stars that are in our magazines. They've and they've totally we destroyed them. our market. They've right. absolutely destroyed us. 95% of what we watch on our cinema screens is American. So you would and have a quota in our cinemas that says you have to absolutely. show 10% absolutely. British films. It has what, to what would your happen percentage now. be? Because I've gone press for the news headline. Well, let's start with 12%. Okay, let's start, let's start with 12%. If it's good enough for the Finns, it's good enough for us. So that's one of our things for our manifesto, we would like 12% of films shown in British cinemas to be British. Back to our conversation in a moment.